Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend D.G. Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. There's been a murder. Hello everyone, welcome back, it's been a while, welcome back to Salty and Petty, because you know, she's a little bit salty. He's a whole lot of petty, and together with the Salty and Petty podcast, duh, uh, but also, gobble gobble. No oh my. It's, what is this, some kind of crossover episode? What? Gobble gobble. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, it is hog gobble I gobble. It is all- it's Charlie. He would have gotten that Bojack Horseman reference. Oh, well. Oh, I thought you were going to say. Unfiltered swine. I thought you were going to say because this is taking place during uh, Gobble Gobble Month. Gobble Gobble. Yes, exactly. All right. So, yes, we are back to talk the Thanksgiving movie. But before we get into that, uh, well, I'm sure everyone on the planet Earth knows things have happened. Uh, so. For the foreseeable future, this is a safe space. We're not going to talk any po- politics. Uh, so, yes. There's nothing to talk about. Come here to escape reality. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like we do every week. Again, both sides are welcome. We're not talking politics. And both sides are welcome to give us their money. So, boom. All right. Ah, the true American dream. Capitalist pigs. I love it. That's right, kids. I only see one color. Green. <laughs> Green! Gimme, gimme! <laughs> we need the money! Gimme, gimme! Alright, so yes, uh, so, yes, so we, uh, here to review the Thanksgiving movie, which, well. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, um, I totally, um, I threw it out there, I didn't think you were actually gonna say yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> No, you're not really like a horror guy. Uh, oh, I also, mean, I used I used to be. I haven't been watching as much lately, but I have no problem with horror. Yeah, I I totally forgot this movie. Like, um, I saw it like last year when it came out, and when I I just went to go see it with a bunch of my stupid friends, and I didn't realize it was an Eli Roth movie, right? So now I'm rewatching it to to talk about it today, and I'm like, yeah, this is a total Eli Roth movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so if you don't know who that is, it's the guy who basically did like Hostel One and Two, um, Cabin Fever, which is actually pretty great. The Grindhouse movies with Robert Rodriguez, um, Knock Knock. Who's here? <laughs> no, it was a pretty good movie starring Keanu Reeves. If yeah. you've never seen it, uh, and then he also did the Borderlands movie, which we can roast another day. Okay. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> I remember hearing about this movie, but then I completely forgot about it because I don't think I even knew like the plot of it. But yes. Uh... Yeah, we'll get into it, but I just want to—I just want to talk about Eli Roth for a little bit because oh, yeah. fun fact about him is, if you know anything about me, you know I love Baywatch, and I actually don't mind the 2017 Baywatch movie, but he actually co-produced that movie with The Rock and Zac Zac Efron. Like I say, even with your arch nemesis in that movie. Well, he wasn't the arch, he wasn't like the main arch nemesis at the time. He hadn't completely ruined the Fast and Furious franchise at that point. That was before Hobbs and uh, Shaw came out. So uh... I was—I wasn't—I wasn't thinking it that much. I mean. No, now, kind of now your super villain origin is complete. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, now it's complete. Show me on the doll where the Rock touched the Fast and <laughs> yeah, Furious franchise. It's Momoa joins in to just make it even worse. Like I just the people I used to love yeah, just stab yeah, me in the yeah. back. <clears throat> Can't trust nobody. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into this. Um, like I said, it's a from twenty twenty three. It's a slash film. It's directed by Eli Roth. It was written by Jeff Rendell. Um, it's kind of loosely based from the trailer of the same name from that Grindhouse movie from 2007. Um, yeah, it's, it's such a weird movie because like the the people that star in this movie are just like, oh, you've, it's come to this for you. <laughs> we got Aww. Patrick Dempsey, aka that guy from freaking um, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> we got Addison Rae, some random TikTok star who like sings too. Somebody told me. <laughs> Um, we got Ty Victor Olsen for freaking Supernatural. Shout out to Vinny. Um, and then we have like Gina Gershon. Like what? 
Yeah, I was like, Gina Gershon. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, is she going to turn out to be the killer? I'm like, we didn't not just waste Gina Gershon in like the first couple minutes of this movie. And then there's random Rick Hoffman from freaking Suits. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> With a mustache, with a Charlie Esser mustache. <laughs> exactly. And then it's like some random podcast guy, Tim Dillon. I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> the guy that plays Manny, he's like a, like a, 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 a um, he's like a stand-up comedian, but he has like a pretty popular podcast too. And I'm like, podcasters are about to rule the freaking world. If anyone's going to make, if any podcasters are going to make gratuitous appearances, it should be It's going to be Logan Paul. Let's, let's uh... all just be real. It's going to be Logan Paul and KSI remaking Beverly Hills Cop. Mark my words. <laughs> Stay tuned for 2025 predictions on the, <laughs> on the, on the Patreon. Um, so let's just get into the plot because it's pretty wild. Also, shout out to Sony. This is one of Sony's better movies from last year. <laughs> like, I think the budget was like $15 million and they made like 47 back. Mm. I don't think they've seen numbers like that no, since, the, since uh, Spider-Man movies. So stay tuned for ha- for uh, Thanksgiving too. Oh, well, it's a slasher film, so yeah, of course. Oh, uh, I'll get into my thoughts. But I remember this this plot is kind of wild. So it's like literally on Thanksgiving Day in Plymouth, Plymouth Massachusetts, a, co- uh, a mob gathers outside like this local superstore. Let's just say Walmart. <laughs> they call it Right Mart, I think, if I remember right. Yes. In preparation for a Black Friday sale, uh, we see Jessica, whose father Thomas owns the store. And she lets her friends Gabby, Bobby, Evan, Scooby, uh, Scooby, <laughs> Scuba, and uh, Julia inside early. And the crowds notice, and they start stampeding into the store in a frenzy. Now this, this hits home. Like I, I, I am a millennial. I am literally. I remember. I couldn't since I was five years old up until very recently, up until the pandemic, pretty much. Every single Black Friday, well, yeah, pretty much. You see the news that night, somebody died because they were trampled to death. Mm-hmm. And then, like, shout out to the lady who's known for losing her wig, and she got on the Wendy Williams show for that. Like, chef's kiss. Like, that is just a part of that, like, late stage disgusting capitalism. And it just, and it's like, okay, okay, I see you, I see you, I see what's going on here. You're gonna have a, a fake deep conversation about capitalism. I love that for you, Eli Rob. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that kind of like triggered some <laughs> some childhood trauma. Like, <laughs> you remember those those uh those news clips oh those yeah clips. oh yeah yeah yeah. and again yeah, t- like i will say i did have a cabbage patch doll that did have a tickle me almost so shout out to my mama whatever she had to do shout out to my mama and it's also all- and it me too <laughs> i know and that was like uh, oh god what were they wrestling over in this movie i'm like it wasn't even worth it it wasn't it was It was like it wasn't like a slow cooker or something or like really it should have been an air it should have been a ninja air fryer but i don't think they wanted the smoke on that one <laughs> but yeah so the in the, in the ensuing chaos amanda the wife of um mitch who's a a, a right mart employee a security guard and a customer are killed when body gets his arm shattered in the riot and then he like moves away mm-hmm. hmm. that's not a red herring is it <laughs> no you know what it, it's also like uh like the whole thing with the store you know on black friday it's almost like little shades of like uh a christmas story you know where like the uh the rich boss making the uh you know the employee instead the of working christmas yeah. eve it's like oh you gotta work on thanksgiving <laughs> Shout out to the pandemic for really changing things for quote unquote essential workers because we actually haven't had like a Black Friday sale in person in the store in a long time. Like the sale starts in October, basically. Mm. It pretty much goes the week before. They don't make them come in on Thanksgiving night to do anything anymore. That's because we don't have 24 hour Walmarts. That's a whole nother conversation we need to have. Spam, Walton. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I do really appreciate that. I did enjoy that. Cause like when I grew up, this is the crazy thing. I don't know about you, Phil, but like when I grew up, literally everything was close to Thanksgiving. And then it was like, well, I turned like 13 or 14. And slowly but surely, people were like, oh yeah, um, come in at 5 a.m. Black Friday. And until it was like, uh, right after dinner on Thanksgiving, yeah, after the yeah. football game, come on in. And I'm just like, can, can, can we not have anything? Like Thanksgiving was meant to be a nice, like four day weekend with your family kind of thing. That's yeah. fucking, fucking Thursday, you know? And it just encroaches and encroaches and encroaches. I remember. I, you know, it used to be everything was closed. If you forgot the cranberry sauce, you were S O L. Okay. <laughs> Grandma's beating Loaf over the head with them cranberries. Oh, not me. No, no, no. We were very prepared. <laughs> I, I 
literally have, well, I, I shot the Sam's Club in Costco, and that, that's kind of a generational trauma. I literally have, like, six cans of, of cranberry sauce from last year for no reason. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so this year, I'm good. Same thing with the stuffing. Uh, I ain't gonna be fighting them crowds. Yeah, I never did last know. year. No lie, at Win Dixie, some some people were fighting over turkeys because it was like the Wednesday before. Like I think I was getting like evaporated milk or something for like dessert, oh, and I seen two old ladies fighting because it was like you know they were marking it down. It's the last day, really, you know, mm-hmm. and they were fighting over those turkeys. I was just like, Phew. uh, so yeah, this this kind of just hit home. That opening scene just kind of hit home. So, so we cut to the next year. And right marks right back in it, beginning preparations for another Black Friday sale. We see Bobby returning to Plymouth. Um, and then also this waitress named Lizzie is killed by a figure wearing a John Carver mask. And I'm just like, D- does anybody, is, is John Carver too niche? I mean, I love history, so I know who John Carver is. But like, I thought that was like, I think people were thinking it was like a bad Guy Fox mask. I guess they were looking for a symbol of Thanksgiving or, you know. It's the Mayflower Compact. If you don't know, he's the first governor of the Plymouth Colony. They need, they needed some... Like, I think that was a little too niche for most Americans. <laughs> they wanted something, like, pilgrim-looking and, you know, just... Yeah, I think... I, I don't know. I just, I just like, when I found out who it was supposed to be, and I was like, yeah, I think that was too niche for most Americans. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, Lizzie's involvement in the Right Mart um, incident leads police police to believe that those that are involved are being targeted. So they actually literally start calling the, 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 the killer John Carver. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, oh my god. This is like, it's like when people call the freaking killer and scream ghost I'm like, babes, Tatum's the only one that ever said that name and she's dead, babes. Like, why are we calling them? <laughs> Wu-Tang's gonna get you. You can't be going around saying Ghostface killer. You know what I mean? Like, come on. True so, yeah. So uh, Jessica and her friends um, get tagged in that really nasty social media post, and I'm just like, oh, it's a modern. And then Jessica has, a, yeah, it's a modern movie. We got, we got, we got social media. The killer's using social media and Insta. <laughs> Gotta have your Insta moment. Uh, I could have been worse. They could have been using Snapchat. F in the chat for Snapchat. If you know, you know. Um, Jessica lends camera footage from the Right Mart incident to the town sheriff Eric Newland. Uh, well, yeah, because supp- supposedly the footage, the cameras weren't working, but yeah, she got the footage from her father's hard drive. Or all- Somebody's always watching in right, Mart. Oh, and of course, and of course, the sheriff's like, oh, thank you. Couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> <laughs> so we see the killer um, kill several more like residents involved in the riot, including poor Lonnie and Amy and that security guard, Manny. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, this- I mean, this kill count's pretty freaking high already. Um, are we supposed to feel bad for these people or are we rooting for the killer because i'm rooting for the killer yeah like the waitress like i was like i was like uh, before they even got that scene i'm like i hope she dies and then like she first victim i was like yes thank you <laughs> I'm just like, yeah this is one of those uh this is just one of those uh turn off your brain and have fun kind of slasher movies and I- i'll get into like the cool little easter eggs and like you guys thought process by mm. making this movie because i i feel like if you're a horror movie fan you kind of get what he's going for uh but again, camp is a, a very fine line. Mm. And again, just because you lampshade something doesn't make it okay. And that's what this movie is filled with. <laughs> so we get to Evan and Gabby, and they get abducted uh, while Yulia is attacking her home. And then uh, Jessica and Scuba make it there, but they're unable to stop the killer from disemboweling her with a saw. And I was like, that's a nice little kill. I mean, it's nothing like Saw. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those have some really good kills. But that's very reminiscent of that. Um, <laughs> and the holiday puns are so top tier in this. I'm sorry. They are. <laughs> oh, my God. But just that scene Scuba holding her with her guts, like, falling out. It's like, what do, what do I do? Well, I like, well, make sausage, of course. Oh! Hey, don't let it go to waste. Oh, wow. Oh. So the police get this bright idea to try to lure out the killer by having the right family participate in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. I'm like, way to traumatize all the children. And we see the killer like in the in a different disguise, decapitate a mascot, and he starts setting off bombs. And then in all of that chaos, he abducts Jessica, her stepmom, Thomas, and Scuba. And I'm just like, great, great job. The police are in on it. They gotta be at this point. They gotta be. I mean, or they're just that incompetent. And, and, but again, I mean, brilliance by the killer where it's like, yeah, he wears a mask. So it's like, why can't he switch masks and wear something completely different? 
switch it up. Mm-hmm. So then we get to Kathleen, um, and she's prepared and cooked alive. And I'm like, oh, she's giving little Hannibal vibes. Okay. Um, then her her corpse is served as the turkey. I, that was crazy. That scene was crazy. That I was know. very house of wax to me. Oh, yeah, cooking her in the big oven and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Gobble, and gobble. We, I don't want that turkey. <laughs> I don't want that turkey off. Uh, then we see the killer bludgeon Evan to death in a live stream, and I'm like, oh, technology! <laughs> and uh, all the puns just in that kill were, you know, just, like, we're gonna break the internet. <laughs> you have to beat him over the head with it. <laughs> Yikes. Again, just because you lampshade it doesn't make it okay. Uh, but uh, somehow, somehow Jessica and Scuba escape from the table, and the killer chases Jessica through the woods. Uh, she then comes upon uh, Newland lying on the pavement, and she's like, uh, she's following the signs of moving into a building where the that parade float uh, stuff was being stored. Mm-hmm. And then she sees Bobby in a Carver costume. But then Newland joins her and tells her to go outside. And then we hear gunshots, but Bobby's not there. <laughs> so the police inform Jessica that her friends and father are safe. And then we get to the sheriff's office and Jessica notices the same debris from the woods that stuck to her clothes is also stuck to the hem of Newland's pants. Revealing that allegedly he is the killer. I don't know about that. It might be just bad writing, but I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, Newland reveals his motives for the murder. It's like, I think my wife, wife left me. He, he met Amanda and he had an affair and she became pregnant with his child, so she planned a divorce match to be with him. When Amanda was killed during the right Mart incident, not only did he lose the love of his life, but he lost his unborn baby. And I'm like, this sounds like a plot to Empire, but okay. <laughs> so Newland began targeting those who held responsible for the riot um, as their negligence and violence caused her death along with the death of his child. So he adopt, uh, abducted Bobby, put him in the car, cost him to frame him. And then that's when a horrified Newland realizes Jessica has live streamed his confession. I'm like, ooh, not the Facebook confession. Oh! Exposed to him as the killer. He attacked her, but good old sweet Bobby entered. Uh. Yeah, that that last little fit rage dude uh, throws. He tries to attack with trying to kill Jessica from his plans of his life. She loads the musket. And I was, I was waiting. You know, Chekhov's musket. Oh, yeah. Oh, her yeah, yeah. Bracelet, then shoots down a balloon attached to that tank of gas, causing an explosion. The, 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 the minute she started inflating that, I was like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> oh, boy, yeah. Yeah, that was telegraphed. Driving away from the explosion. Boom. <laughs> so she finally gets to hook back up with Gabby and Scuba while Bobby's taken to the hospital. But guess what? We definitely probably will get a sequel since it tripled its money. Authorities are unable to find Newland's body. Jessica has a nightmare in which she's attacked by a flaming new. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> This movie is actually rated pretty highly for critics for a horror movie and specifically for an Eli Roth movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I was just, I'm perplexed by it. it. I mean, like I said, it's camp, but I, I, I know that that fine line and I get all the references because I love 80s horror slasher movies, which is, this is a love letter to, especially like the holiday themed ones. April Fool's Day, don't even get me started. My bloody Valentine, like I get them all. I, I get it. But like, again, it's like, I th- think it's maybe lampshade it doesn't make it cool. I think maybe it gets a pass because there aren't a lot of like if there aren't like many uh, Thanksgiving like horror movies. Yeah, and I it, think so. Like no, I don't think that it's fun. Turn off your brain, kind of thing. Um, and and it, like I said, if you're in a, a, a kind of sewer of horror movies, especially like eighty slashers, um, like he is very much, you get it. But you know, the cinematography is good. The score is good. Um, it's not trying to do anything but just be a fun movie, and I can appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Did you have fun with this movie, Phil? <laughs> I did have fun with this movie. But, uh, but also... the horror is about. Yeah, and it too, I mean, it's like a Black Friday. Everyone has their, you know, feelings about Black Friday. So it's like yeah. everyone can kind of relate to the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Like I said, I- I have very vivid memories of, of my childhood watching the news and thinking people are crazy. I literally never wanted to go out on a Black Friday. Like I'm like, babe, I say I, I wait for Cyber Monday. Like I'm a I'm an Amazon eBay girly. Like I'm not going out in that mess. Yeah, no. I don't care if I don't care if that, that fifty inch TV is a dollar. I ain't going. I ain't fucking going. Family, friends, everybody over the years have been like, You wanna go Black Friday? No. No. That's why. No. No. 
Well, I don't like I don't like crowds to begin with, and you give me pushy crowds, man. No. Yeah, I mean, it is good for the malls. I will say because malls are dying, unfortunately. Yeah. That's, that's that's our third space that we don't really utilize that in libraries. So mm-hmm. like I, you know, you do what you got to do to get them packed in, but it's also a scam because they just raised the prices and give you the discount that was the previous price. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that at this point. Yeah, yeah, I think they've called that out the last couple of years. Like people like walked into like targets and stuff and just like looked under the sign. And it's like, oh hey, look, same price it was before. Yeah, Target's real bad on that actually. <laughs> it's not a class action lawsuit yet, to be honest. Yeah. Although I caught, I I mean, I guess it was uh, sort of clever to use the uh yeah the cop as the killer. But I was like, I was almost hoping that you know. It was like Gina Gershon, and like she wasn't really dead, and like she came back for revenge. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah, I was like, when I saw her, I was just like, just, they went and drug poor Gina Gershon. Because at first, I was like, really, we're only going to use Gina Gershon in the first couple of minutes, but I guess she's it's like the Drew Barrymore. Of it that's all. what I was just about to say. She's like the Drew Barrymore. Yeah. Yes, I very much think that that was the reference that we were going for. Because I think you're like, oh, because. I think she's, she has such such goodwill, which is unproblematic for the most part. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, like I said, I thought the movie was fun. I thought it was, I got all the references. It's Eli Roth, though, so you mm. know, you always kind of have to temper your ex- expectations. Like I said, I love Hostel, the first one. Mm-hmm. Super good. Second one, I could have sworn that he didn't even make the second one because it's bad. <laughs> and there's, there's like actually like two more that he actually didn't do, but I, I was convinced for years that he did not do Hostel 2 because it was that bad. <laughs> So it's kind of a hit and miss with him, but I think this is kind of a, a plus. Uh, it's a W in his column for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it tripled its money. It's a horror movie, so it's made on pretty cheap budget. Yeah, just need like yeah special effects for the kills, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, a little CG a little better. <laughs> little, I'm, like, I'm surprised because he's very much a practical effects guy, and so I think that's why he really doesn't make like modern movies anymore because mm. that is just like so frowned upon these days, unfortunately. <laughs> But I will say, I think the original fake trailer was a million times better and funnier. And I was hoping it was actually going to be, like, the the delivery upon that promise. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was my only thing. I was just like, oh, you know, it is what it is, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about that one character, the guy who was selling, the, like, the guns and the booze and stuff? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Massachusetts. Yeah. I mean... It's just so funny because it's, it's like it's Plymouth, and I'm just like, uh huh. At least it wasn't Salem, I guess. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I thought they were, but I thought we were gonna get some Boston pizza owners. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're not in Boston. I thought they were Boston I, pizza owners. Well, there's no Boston pizzas in Boston. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like Salem, or you know, maybe a Boston pizza owner. That would have been interesting. Instead of Right Mart, it was a Boston pizza, and they were having like. 25 cent slices. Oh, shh, get killed over 25 cents. Hey, man, don't feed your kids lunch, Lisa. It's got mold in it. <laughs> oh, oh my. Allegedly. And again, I guess, you know, the, the heat of the moment, and everything. But I'm like, how do, again, even in real life, how do people trample other people? You know, like, you don't understand you're like rocking on a human being. Late stage capitalism. It's a fever. I tell you, a fever. It's, it's the apathy. It's the. Fear of missing out. It's the. It's just. It's sick. That world we live in. I guess. Yeah. Like, like it. True. Things like that have happened. Mm-hmm. I like know. I said it happened at least once a year, every year, from the time I was like five to like fifteen or so. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that's that's well, like one of the most uh, the biggest things in this movie. It's like, yeah, he plays off stuff that has happened in real life. So. And like I said, I'm not I, like it's kind of weird because like I don't. I don't know if we were supposed to be for those people to live. I was hoping he killed every last one of them. Especially after the reveal. I'm like, oh, he gets he has to go up in flames now? Nah. <laughs> That's well, not right. Take her with you. <laughs> maybe he'll be unkillable like Michael Myers. Maybe. Although it's not really Eli Roth's kind of style. Yeah, no. Or is it going to be Scream? Is someone else going to pick up that mask? Yeah, somebody's going to pick up the mask. Because, like I said, somebody dies every year during Black Friday. Mm-hmm. They get inspired from the news coverage and bada boom, bada bang. We have ourselves a franchise, boys. Or it's going to be like, I blame you because the cop came out and killed someone in my family because you started that ride. <laughs> it's going to be such a convoluted chain by parts. As long as, long as it isn't the mom mad about freaking violence, I'm fine. I'm fine. 
No tea, no shade to the late great Wes Bacon. Oh. And the OK Kevin Wood. Uh, hey, that's what we should do. Every so often, we can just review some uh, classic uh, horror movies. I'm always down for that. But I heard I heard a little baby Mountain Dew drinker sent them some feedback. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, yes. That's right, kids. Uh, our friend uh, Russell uh, sent in some feedback. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> Tell me you use that intro on Energon when you when it comes back. You have to use it every time. Oh, do you never heard our intro? No. Oh I don't my. Think it is. Oh my lord. Yeah. Uh, yeah. After all, after the uh, plugs and stuff, it basically would come in and go uh, guilty or innocent. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> if uh, you know Russell, it just sums them up. Yes. Yes. All uh, right. Unless he's talking about O rings. Oh, all right. So here's Russell's feedback. Hey, all. Uh, it's the mood. Uh, hold on. All right. Hey, all. Russell here. As a horror connoisseur, I feel I'm obliged to give my thoughts on Thanksgiving, but I will be brief. Thanksgiving is a fun throwback slasher. Goes on to write eight pages. No. Thanksgiving is a fun throwback slasher. It plays on all the familiar tropes, the tongue-in-cheek humor, and brutality of 80s slashers. It's a little too predictable and a little too reminiscent of Scream, but it's fun. The opening is a lovely homage to Carpenter's Halloween in more ways than one, and it gets bonus points for name-dropping my favorite musical artist of all time, Ronnie James Dio. (laughs) You know what? That makes sense. That tracks. Mm -hmm. I think he's on on the state flag in Kentucky. All right. Uh, So, yes, thank you for the feedback, Russell. Well, I wish you would have sent audio feedback. I think that would have been even better. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know how those two get anything done. <laughs> I don't know how me and him get anything done. Yeah, true. Bad baby. Well, he's the better of the bad babysitters. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? This money made this movie made money against trolls band together in the Hunger Games last year, so good on it. Oh really? Hmm. Yeah, that's what it was up against, and it didn't, like I said, it made its money. I mean, again, well, it wasn't a, it, maybe because, again, I mean, well, the horror, there was nothing else. Well, the horror fans, too, this wasn't a sequel to anything. Uh, yeah. Because those other two were sequels. Oh, wait, I'm looking. He announced uh, there is a, a, a sequel has been greenlit, but it, it was supposed to be for next year. I don't think it's going to do it. I don't think it's going to make it. I don't think it'll be out by Thanksgiving next year. Yeah, they sent Addison Ray out of all the characters. The girl that plays Gabby might come back, and I'm just like, mm, I hope she dies in the first in the first opening scene. Then, oh, okay. oh my. Yeah, I figure. Like I said, it made it to my sense that they figured it tripled its money back by by the close. It usually uh, uh, plus, like I said, Sony doesn't really have much. I mean, what are they making on Craven? Oh, oh! <laughs> Literally, all they have is Across the Spider Verse. Like that's all. They they have the Spider Verse movie. Right? I know. What, what, put that sequel out. I'll put that third one out already. Damn it. <laughs> no, no. We got to save it. We got to save it. <sighs> so, yeah, I, I just uh, enjoyed it. It's fun. I, I recommend it. And it's on Netflix. So, if you have Netflix. Yeah, and you can even rent it on uh, Amazon Prime. So, there's a few places you can rent it. Or, yeah, it's on Netflix. Yeah. I, babes, I, don't, I don't rent horror movies. Either you own them or you find them on Netflix. <laughs> And this is not one of the ones that I will own. I'll have you know. Oh my lord! I saw something on. Uh, this is one, you know, one of the positive things I you see on social media. Was it like last week or something? I think I've seen this post slip before. But a guy in like hit, for his man cave, he built like a mini like blockbuster video, like all. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, like he has like all the DVDs or like VHSs. Like he built shelves and made it look just like you know, and has like a little stand for candy and stuff. And, Phil, you gotta stop there yelling or letting you go to the last blockbuster on Earth before they close. That's gotta be like a case of lunatic road trip special. Ah, uh, get Justin in on it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we need a road trip with Justin. I don't think your poor lungs can handle it, Phil. <laughs> Two hotel rooms go over and knock on their door. What's going on in there? Cheech, Chong, get him! Oh my lord, can you imagine you and Justin in the same room for? 24 hours. <laughs> uh, R.I.P. the bar, whatever hotel that is. This is as brutal than ever. Oh, uh, yeah. Have you ever seen any other, like, um, holiday-themed movies, like Krampus or anything like that? 
Uh, oh. Black, Black Christmas is one, a good one. Not the remake. None of the remakes. All the remakes sit down. Except for My Bloody Valentine because that stars Jensen Ackles. Obviously. Um, I might have seen Black Christmas. It's been a while. Um, Like I said, I haven't watched a ton of horror lately. But uh, yeah, not a ton. Either, although you, does it does it um all right i got a question for you does this uh qualify as a holiday horror movie uh the original gremlins movie yes actually it does well yep yeah, so i've seen that <laughs> i love the gremlins i i, I remember see- brothers just trying to milk them again though so it's unfortunate uh, yeah i remember seeing the, the the original as a little kid and like <laughs> i just found it so hilarious so like all when the, all the gremlins are in the bar you know like all dressed yeah. up and being goofy and yeah. Literally, if you're like a millennial and you don't have a friend that has a dog named Gizmo, are you even a millennial? <laughs> are you even a millennial? <laughs> was it Stripe or was it Spike? The world may never know. Uh, Hashtag Mandela Effect. <laughs> Trying to get some alternative clicks and views here, Phil. Yeah. Me. <laughs> you want to talk some random bullshit? Uh, I don't care. We got, yeah. little, we got a little time to kill. What, I mean... Outside of the obvious, not so random bullshit, like, <laughs> we've got something fun to talk about. I don't know, nothing's really been happening. Yeah, honestly, there's like nothing good coming up except for Craven, and I said good, so nothing good coming up for really. me. Like this holiday season's kind of sparse, man. I know, I know. Uh, oh, did you see? Um, did you see your buddy over to the Rock's new holiday movie coming out? I want to go see that because it's J.K. Simmons. I want to go see it despite the fact Rock's in. Isn't Chris Evans in that one too? That is Chris Evans. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, Lu- and Lucy Liz and Lucy Liu in there too, yeah. Love me Lucy Liu, yeah. I like, the, I, like the, I like I like Listen, I am a millennial. I love me a good Tim Allen Christmas movie, whether it's the Santa Claus or it's Christmas with the Cranks. Okay, I love me a good goofy holiday movie. Okay, I do. And I was like, I saw that, and then and then he showed up, and I was like, oh, Dwayne, go away. <laughs> Uh, Why won't we go away? See, kids, the holiday is magic. The the, the hellfire's heart grew twice as big. I can't say how much. <laughs> oh my! Still the size of a pebble, but it's okay. Oh damn! Oh, that's that's a good movie. I love the Jim Carrey uh, Grinch. He hates it, but I love it. He suffers so we can enjoy. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like if you get the right like holiday movie that people will watch year after year, that's yes. Yeah, that- um, Elf, obviously. But oh, yeah, we covered that. Last we covered that last year, but yeah, I mean, yeah, just uh, Will Ferrell is a license to print money. Yeah, I I've been waiting for a Step Brothers two for freaking five ever. That would be so disappointed. <laughs> Does he have anything like coming out? Since, like, uh, seems like I, it, I remember it used to be a time that you literally every six months there was a Will Ferrell movie, and we just don't live in the Will Ferrell Renaissance anymore. It was like the it was like the er, it was like the two thousands, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that, like the the mid two thousands to like the the. the the mid tens, he was just kind of like king of doing whatever the hell he wanted to do. Well, yeah, it was like you know, right after SNL, yeah, he like got all those movies and yeah. I think I saw him doing. A I, cr- think I literally have all his movies. Shh, don't tell anybody. Don't oh. tell anybody. Oh my! Such a thirteen year old boy thing to have, but it's true. I like Will Ferrell. I think he's hilarious. He doesn't bother anybody. <laughs> that, that's the key to me. Like I don't know, early movies. Like early, early Adam Sandler movies, yes. Anything post that Hanukkah animated movie, no. With the exception of Uncut Gems, because he dies in that spoiler. Oh! Uh, nothing, nothing like a feel good tale for love where someone dies at the end. I mean, it, it's an incredible movie if you haven't seen it, and that's not even a spoiler. Like, I mean, like it won't spoil the movie for you. It's it's an incredible movie. It's not him being trying to be comedy or him dressing up like a woman. Looking at you, Jack and Jill. Oh! Wor- one of his worst movies. Oh, I forget what show I said it on, but uh, I was talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. I finally finally got the Blu-ray of Deadpool and Wolverine, so I'm probably going to watch that this weekend. Rewatch it. Oh, yeah, you were having a hard time. <laughs> well, I said the Target didn't have it. Uh, on Tuesday, when uh, Luke and I were off, we went uh, again. I mean, Best Buy, you can hardly, there's like no movies. Well, good there. luck. Best Buy killed the DVD. You know, Walmart, Walmart was the salvation. Yeah, no. I told you. I Listen, know. Target is good for some things, but other things. They you used might to. Wanna, they you used might want to get a Walmart Plus program. <laughs> I know, but I'm an old man. I used to remember when Target had movies. I mean, remember when Best Buy had like at least an hour or two of just movies? 
DVDs? Uh, yeah, I do. I remember when they had a great computer section, too. And Geek Squad wasn't just some old man holding on to a dream. She just described the Caped Lunatic podcast. <laughs> so true. So true. How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you open the door, I'm going to walk away. That's just how that works. I'm not the oldest one on the team. We have a we have, we we have a little grandfather on our team. I'm not the oldest guy here. What are you talking about? Well, all right. He's a grandfather. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Mm. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Lil's like, oh. No, grandkids are a blessing if the kids are the worst. Lil is like, oh, second generation. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, yeah, grandkids are the best, Lil. Then you send them home. Oh, my dogs are fixed. I ain't, I'm never going to have grandpuppies, yeah. so I'm good. Grandkids are the best, Lil, if you fill them with sugar and send them home. Exactly. Well, I, yeah, godchildren, nieces, nephews, yeah. Yeah. You, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, but, like, yeah, this week is just, like, I, ever since Daylight Savings Time, you know, well, like, yeah. oh, my God, allegedly we got an hour back, but I don't believe them. <laughs> yeah, I feel, again, even though you, get, like, you can get an extra hour of sleep, it just makes you feel weird. Yeah, it's, it's dark way too soon. It gets dark sooner, yeah. But, like, it's still in the freaking 80s here. I know. And it's, know. it's in the 80s in a lot of places, so it just doesn't feel like freaking no, awesome. Tuesday, Tuesday, it was 80. It was like pretty, uh, might have been, I don't know if it hit 80, but it was high 70s at least. And I was like, yeah, that, that's that's scary because I remember 2007 when I went to Las Vegas in the beginning of November. It was 80 out in Vegas. I was like, yeah, Ugh. and out in Pennsylvania was 80. Okay. Yeah, the weather's been weird for a while. Everything's been weird for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I can't tell because, like, uh, I remember when I was a kid, like, March used to be, like, the windy season, and we haven't had a windy season in, like, a decade that I can remember, probably longer, so everything's just kind of shifting and changing, and I'm just, I feel old. Wait this till- movie made me feel old with all the references I knew. <laughs> Wait till you cross that 40 threshold there. Shh. Shh. Never. You know, in, you know, in 15 years, you know? <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. Exactly. Do you tell this? Oh, uh, what's that text in the city? I was like, not a day over thirty nine. Do you tell those himbos your real age or no? You think I talk to those guys? <laughs> <laughs> text message. That's right. Sit right here. Me. Yes. That's right here. Yes. That's right here. Just sit down, take your pants off, and play that PlayStation. Okay, very good. Thanks for the apple juice and the package. Oh. Here's Spider Man too. <laughs> Let me get these ComStat reports in, and I'll be right back with you. Oh, uh, Mama didn't talk. Mama didn't. Mama didn't bring you here to talk. Mama brought you here to uh, be exactly. a piece, to be a piece of exercise equipment. <laughs> mm, I don't know about all that. <laughs> oh, those squats. Sometimes you gotta channel your inner Bruce Wayne. You know, you gotta be a pull-up person. Well, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say you're doing squats, but I was like, yeah, you. I, for, I forgot you admitted you're a pillow princess. I can be, I can be. Three, two, one, Justin picks himself up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, like, I don't have anything I'm looking forward to. Like, usually, like, for, like, Thanksgiving weekend, there's, like, a movie I want to go take the kids to and stuff, but, like, I don't know. Oh, I was going to say, I was going to say, isn't there saying something coming out big this, but isn't it that Wicked movie coming out? But that's the, I think that's yeah, the big I'm Thanksgiving. Not, is Wicked coming out for Thanksgiving? Really? I don't know if it's, it's either that week or maybe is it the weekend before? Or... Yeah, it's November 22nd. Oh, I can't believe they're pushing this to Thanksgiving. I thought that they were going to save this for Christmas. Yeah. Because it's a musical, and that's usually what they do. But it's Universal, and Universal does what they want because they really ain't got nothing to hold on to. I mean, it makes more sense than putting on Craven. They got the Fast and the Furious. That's what they got. That's what Universal has. They killed the monster movie franchise. I thought Invisible Man was great and could have like anchored the... Uh, universe down despite Tom Cruise's money failing. I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. I know. I thought Invisible Man was so underrated. Hmm. Another good horror film. Yeah, they tried to start that it's whole psychological thriller, but they tried to reboot that whole unit, like yeah, the Universal Monster. Yeah, Tom Cruise's and... mummy failed so bad. I'm like, babe, you could Brandon Fraser was having a big time. What were you doing? Brandon Fraser is doing nothing. Man, how many times has Hollywood like disrespected Brandon Fraser? That's okay. He made a comeback. He's doing good. The guy that made him leave Hollywood is so he got his comeuppance. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy for Brandon. Mm-hmm. And plus, you know, Warner Brothers actually did right by him. So I appreciate that. That's one good thing they have done. <laughs> yes, very good. Now, if they could just only fix the Matt Bomber situation, 
I'm just saying, if they need an old Superman to corn sweats, like if they're doing flash forwards, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, please, you can, you can use Matt Bomber. It is okay. He can say corn. That is my one wish is for Matt Bomber to play Superman in some shape, way, or form. Did you say corn sweats? <laughs> yes. That's my nickname for him. Do you have a problem with that? <laughs> I thought that's what you get after Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> the corn sweats. Oh, you shouldn't eat corn, babes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it rolls off the tongue easier than like turkey sweats or so, you know, gravy sweats. Uh, uh. Gravy, definitely gravy sweat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stuffing sweat. Oh. Well, I'm having a turducken this year. Yeah. I, we haven't had a turducken in a couple years. Yeah, it's a turkey duck dish. It's all smashed together. I'm very excited. Are you having friends giving again? Yeah, for all the all the childless people. Although, haha, plot twist, I'm not childless this year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're gonna be like, well, Wolf has random children running around. <laughs> yeah, so no wine, no wine. Sparkling cider for all this year. Oh my. If I gotta be sober, everybody's gonna be sober. Oh, 2025. <laughs> yeah, but you better you better get your stocks in on your luxury liquor brand. So so January for so New Year's Eve are you get is that gonna be your first official uh drink? Um, the return. No, I don't know because I don't. I think I'm staying in the house for New Year's Eve. Honestly, well, I'm staying in the hotel New Year's Eve. I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere. Yeah, well, I mean, even better. I mean, if you drink, then you know. No, no, no. I'm not an actual drunk. I don't. I don't drink alone. I don't drink alone in the dark. Ah, she's a friendly drunk. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a social drinker who's just a little too social sometimes. It's like all my all my liquor bottles are actually full. That's how you know I'm not. I'm not gonna say full, but they're at least three quarters. I thought maybe you were going to you were going to a party or something on New Year's Eve. I was like, be like, yeah. I was like after like after the the uh, the week I've had, I, I've decided that yeah, I'm still gonna go to Vegas, but I'm probably not gonna go out too much while I'm in Vegas. Yeah, so I thought maybe on New Year's Eve I'd sense a disturbance in the forest. And I'd be like, nope, oh, she's back. <laughs> no, I, I gotta ease into it. I don't want to have to go into like a, a coma or hurt myself. Hey. <laughs> So yeah, like yeah, you know, I had like a beer, glass of wine here and there, but like not like I, I need to build my tolerance back up. Just gonna go to Vegas and have a bunch of brownies. I mean, it's legal there. Yeah, it is. I mean, rec- true recreational Florida. Ugh, so disappointed. It's like, bro, just take the money. Take. Well, again, it's like it's like up here. There's too many old people down there. That's the problem. It's good for the arthritis. Wake up. I know, I know, but they, that's like up here, man. It's like Ohio's getting like all the tax money and stuff from it because, like, I guess they legalize it. People aren't going over. Bro, that blew my mind. I was like, Ohio. I know. I'm like, huh. no, Tino, shit, Tyler, but Ohio. Uh, I'm just like, come on, Pennsylvania, super, Ohio super. did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, 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 that's out of all the Midwest. Well, Illinois did it first, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the, the the country's getting cooler and cooler, but not fast enough. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, okay. Twenty-four states. We're almost halfway there. I'm just saying. Well, if you include DC, which I know it's not a state, but I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I keep. We're halfway there. I, I keep. Saying... Alaska of all places, actually. Mm. Shout out to Marnell and Diane. Yes. I mean, I. Oh God. I keep saying it, but I'm just like, I, I don't have a dog in either one of these fights, but I'm just like, how, how is alcohol legal? But. Uh, I was know. just having that conversation. I'm like, bro, you could get as much. Nobody. I mean, as long as you're not like in a bar sitting down getting drunk where they have to cut you off. For yeah. You can literally go into a liquor store and buy a, buy a case. No. A case. No. Not even like a case of beer. A case of alcohol. Yeah. Nobody says anything. You can buy a, ca- a carton of cigarettes. Nobody says anything. As long as you're paying the tax on it. Nobody says anything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think, that, I, think, I think the United States would be a little bit of a better place if it was just legal everywhere. Exactly. Exactly. Mellow everybody the hell out. There's a lot of things they should just legalize, and then you can tax it. And yeah, because I mean, at least the incels could get laid. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know, but you know what? No politician wants to go go on record and be like, "Yeah, let's legalize prostitution." <laughs> think of the taxes. Exactly, and again, it'll help us be fiscally responsible. That's all I'm saying. It would put a crimp on like human trafficking a little bit, and you can make people, you know, if you have like your, 
you know, sex worker license or something, you would have to get like a blood test Just every so often. Just look to Nevada, my friend. Just look to Nevada. Exactly. I mean, again, between gambling and prostitution, I mean, they barely pay any taxes in Nevada, right? Yeah, you don't pay state taxes. And the federal taxes when I lived there, though, like a little bit before Obama. Mm-hmm. So they're pretty good. They were just coming out of the housing crisis. I don't know what it's like there now, but I would imagine with the legalization of um, marijuana, mm-hmm. they probably don't, they don't, the everything gets lower just just to entice people to move there, build there, do projects and stuff. So, I mean, I'm thinking about moving back there. So, no, well, you like the warm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love the warm. It's a dry heat like hell, so I, I'm right at home. <laughs> I know, man. That summers are brutal, though. I mean, what they, they didn't even get to like well, 100. Literally, was wearing t shirt, long sleeve t shirts and jeans. Like it's not that bad. Like the more you cover up, the cooler you stay though. That's like kinda of like the misconception. The more you show your skin, the more heat and UV rays get to you and stuff. So Oh that's true though too, too cause yeah, you you get cold easily, so Yeah. Yeah. Low shout, shout out to my anemic low iron girlies. <laughs> Seriously go get that checked out though. That's not healthy. <laughs> oh shit. I, I can't know. believe Wicked's the only movie coming out though, bro. Really? That's crazy. I mean, are we just are we still feeling the effects of that uh, shutdown? They keep saying that Hollywood's dying. Like uh, uh, streamers and TikTokers well, yeah. are the new solution. A lot, yeah, a lot of the stuff. A lot of the stuff's going to the streamers because I think they're throwing more money around than the big studios. And I mean, not even really anymore. Like. And it's like, I mean, it, don't give Netflix anything; they'll freaking kill it. Yeah, although I and again, it's like if you make a big budget movie, it's like you know, it's like you know, you're not even guaranteed people are going to go to the theater. But if you do a streamer, yeah, pe- people are more likely yeah, to just sit down in their living room and say, "Model, you don't really have like anything on the back end," and that's why you don't really see like a lot of movies have like franchises on on like the streamers and stuff. Mm. So. I don't know. Like, I think streaming's getting ready to die too. It's it's about time. Like, we, we've just made cable. I'd rather just pay my cable bill. Well, like we said, uh, you know, a lot of these streaming services now are like bundling together and stuff. It's like e- as much as I love you, ES- ES- ESPN Plus, I could do without you. I have my phone. I know how to check scores. I, uh, well, actually, now that I'm not on Twitter anymore, which was a great place to keep up with news and sports, I might have to take that back. I might have to. I might need ESPN. If you I want, it, need if you want, I'll have Lucas send you uh, places to find sports scores. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know the places, but it's like you know, it's different. It's the- and like, why? Why is Thursday night football on Amazon Prime? Like, what are we doing? We are losing rest- money. <laughs> There's freaking wrestling on Netflix. Like, I. I well, yeah, yeah, what, well, yeah. Man. WWE Raw is going to this, yeah, uh, Netflix it's in got January. got that Logan Paul Tyson fight on Netflix. And I'm just like, I wonder how much he paid Tyson to take a dive. Because I don't care how old he is. That's iron. That's freaking iron. Mm-hmm. Just Tyson. Yeah. He, he looks easy. I would, listen, I wouldn't piss him off. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, I wouldn't piss him off. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then WWE Raw going to Netflix next year. It's, uh, that t- was a huge get. And it's, John, it's going to be John What the hell does USA and Sci-Fi have now? Nothing? Well, they have the other. or They have uh, WWE SmackDown still, as far as I know, unless they both go to uh, Netflix. Oh, okay, I was going to say, they ain't going to have nothing. But uh, no, it's and it's John Cena's John Cena's last year next year. Like he's allegedly. Well, no, Doesn't I. He said that every year, like he comes back. Well, I did hear an interview somewhere like a while ago, oh, the like Rock months ago. Wants him out of there since he's well, like the chairman. Well, no, no, no. Uh, John Cena was saying like he's like he's like I you know I said I'd be out of there by fifty. And I don't know if he's gonna be turning fifty soon. He's like I you know if he's. Like, he's a liar though. Yeah, but he's no, like no, you know, Shay. John Cena is yeah. an attention whore. Uh, but I think. But I think it's just like physically, he's like, I can't, you know, I can't do that. And then, like, you know, snap right back and, you know, I, I, I think we'll he, see. I well, doubt it. I, I just think maybe because he's, you know, now he can get movies and commercials. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Oh, oh. <laughs> he'd be, he'd have better luck going back to his rap career. Is oh, what I heard. damn. Well, well, uh, well, Peacemaker. Right. Hey, we'll see what season two. You know what I mean. I mean, you make friends with Gun. I mean, I think he puts you in everything. So he does. So. If Warner Brothers lets him. I don't know. <gasps> I don't know. I, 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 I'm not not the one to to, to spread tea and gossip, but I, I, he's being a little diva. So I don't know. Oh. That's what I'm saying. We'll see. 
And then, of course, Vin Diesel. Well, Vin Diesel's hard to work with, too. Just don't do it. That's all right. Dave, well, Bati- Dave Batista will start and everything. Or in the Marine, too, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I mean, John Cena's not his first uh, wrestler. He calls it. He calls Dave Batista for everything. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? Every single movie, Dave Batista gets better. I love that about him. He really tries. He's putting in the effort to be an artiste, and I appreciate that about him. Yeah, because he just did one. Not- no, knock at the knock at the cabin door. I, I love that movie. There was one he just did recently. Uh, what was the name of it? He was like an assassin or something. Oh, um, was that a Netflix special too? No, I think it was. I. Uh, I mean, it was in the theaters, I believe. Hold on, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was just out not too long ago. Um, Let's see. I don't care about his wrestling right now. Relative strangers. No. The Killers game. Oh, oh! I don't think I've seen that one. I haven't seen it. We were. Th- I saw him in Dune Part Two. That little tiny part that was good for him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, the killer's game, and I think, uh, oh, what's her face, Bob Palm. Uh, oh, he was in Glass Onion too. I right, now that I think. Oh about yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Now that's somebody you really want to get in your corner. I, it, it, you know, it has to do an M Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> I feel like it's just kind of prerequisite. And I thought that was one of the better M Night Shyamalan movies he could have been in. So it's got a little, uh, little um, power of uh, desertion. Uh, so yeah, mm-hmm. appreciate it. But well, I think he's making money off the royalties from those video games from WWE, yeah. Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where his bread and butter is. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think two, 2K24 did good, so. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> I mean, I think every year it does good. Well, they keep they keep, keep putting they keep putting out DLCs, so, you know. Well, welcome to AAA Studios. <laughs> Do you want to know how many uh, DLCs The Sims 4 has? It's 80 two at this point so she always has to defend the sims kid i'm not defending it yeah that's, oh, actually no, no, pretty no, no. that's pretty atrocious yeah. i'm just saying like yeah that, no, that's down that, that's dlc yeah. fatigue but i've been slowly been making my way through uh, and we'll probably do a couple episodes next year kids uh the, that original twilight zone after we talked about it on patreon yeah like you think about it you're like yeah i should watch it are you watching it on pp plus i mean paramount plus <laughs> yes 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 and of course, when South Park comes back now, I'm just itching for South Park, man. I know, too. I need, I need a South Park palate cleanse after the year I've had. Mm-hmm. But now I'm, I, so, I'm, I'm glad it didn't cover the election. I'm glad we're starting fresh. And exactly. We'll about it. But now that Twilight Zone, that's when TV was TV. The first season was like 36 episodes. I was like, damn. There's one. I think it's like maybe season three or four that literally has like. 60 episodes or something <laughs> like what is this an animated series from the 90s what the hell exactly yeah like I, there's some really really good ones there's some really really bad ones but most of them are really like just generally pretty good like you can just turn it on and most of them are pretty good i appreciate that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like he, the rod sterling took, uh, took that show very seriously it was a very personal passionate project yeah. and you could just see it so yeah i, I can't wait to talk some twilight zone if you have opinions about Twilight. So, oh, you also have to kind of watch the the '90s one and then the newer one that they made too, just for some comparison and contrast. Okay, I'll just... the, the Jordan Peele one, uh, the first season, not that bad. Second hmm. one, I think they kind of lost their way, and that's probably why they didn't give a season three. But the '90s one, I think people hate on it just because it's it, it's a '90s twist on it. You know, I'm trying to remember, I might have seen some of those. Yeah, I was more of a till. Uh... Tales from the Crypt and Outer, Outer Limits, absolutely. <laughs> Tales from the Crypt, yeah. Is that streaming anywhere? We we, we need to do an episode on that. Is it, it should be on HBO of all it places. It should be on Max, but who knows? I don't, th- I, don't, I don't think, I think they scrubbed that from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to do an episode on Tales from the Crypt. Uh, next, you know what, next Spooktober on Tales, we could do some <gasps> of the original oh, EC yeah. comics. Oh yeah! We can do the Tales from the Crypt movie, and then we can do some of our favorite episodes. We can like rank some of our. Was there episodes. one or two movies for Tales from the Crypt? I don't know of one, but I want to say there's probably two because the, the Demon Knight one I don't think we count, but technically there are two movies. Hmm. Hmm. It only had seven. <laughs> only seven. I mean, back in the day, things used to get more than seven. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know if it's streaming. I think they. So, well, I'm seeing somewhere it might they almost on YouTube, but. <sighs> Good luck. <laughs> Wait, it went from '89 to '96. I yeah, I must have saw all the reruns because I saw some of them on HBO. But I remember they used to come on like Fox after like the news. Yes, like, yes, I do remember that too. Yeah, it was ended, but yeah, yeah I, I saw yeah. them all that way. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, they, you can see no nudity or nothing. Yeah. Oh wait, is it on? Is it on Prime? I don't know. Mm. No way, it's on Prime. I, w- I think I would have come across it already. <laughs> well, like I that. think I have to have that Amazon Prime subscription doing everything it's supposed to do. So, 93 mm. episodes, 90, uh, seven seasons, yeah. They didn't make it to 100. That's sad. I know. When you get to like 93, why don't you, you can't just like pump out like a last season with like seven episodes or something? Like, come on. Not Richard Donner being an actual executive producer. I did not know that. I just learned that. Uh, oh, they might have the movies on uh, Prime. Oh, they did have a second um, movie after Demon Knight. Bordello of Blood, yeah. Yeah. So the Blood, movies were on there. Yeah. It had everybody on here, bro. <laughs> like, there's Baby Ian McGregor. There's Ernie Hudson. Eddie Izzard. Wayne Newton. I remember Meryl Hemingway in an episode. Uh, Meatloaf. I remember that one. Leah Thompson, of course. I remember that one. Jada Pinkett Smith's in a terrible, terrible episode. It's in the later seasons. Oh my! <laughs> Bo Bridges, and you know Michael J. Fox. It, it were did you were you even a show in the eighties or nineties, the late eighties, uh, mid nineties? If Michael J. Fox didn't make at least one one damn thing show, were you even an eighties or nineties show? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have all the usual sus- suspects too. Jeffrey Tambor, oh uh, Jenner Hubert, aka the original Aunt Viv. Oh wait a minute! Uh, you can get uh the complete series on DVD on Amazon for like. 45 bucks send me the link we'll do it okay just the, the done and done <laughs> just the dvd i was gonna say Blu- blu-ray if they got it but. yeah i was gonna say i mean i want to see if they have blu-ray but uh that's pushing it i mean it was not shot on the bus yeah. i don't think we're up i mean like no tea no shade to star trek the next generation the blu-ray upscale looks terrible i'd rather watch it on the dvd high, de- high definition version just a personal opinion it just depends on when things are shot and how they're shot that yeah. exactly going to translate. Yeah, you have to look at, but yeah, at least on at least on DVD they got the complete series. So it didn't have a cartoon. Am I tripping? Um, it a cartoon. I think I remember that. I thought I, I just know. saw. I thought I just saw something where I was looking on Prime. I never saw it, but it looks like yeah, that that might be on Prime too. Yeah, like that's pushing it. So 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 are we just playing our next October next October. Yeah, I mean, it, Tales from the Crypt is like they have episodes for every occasion. So don't, oh yeah, don't, don't feel free. Don't feel limited to just the spooky season. <laughs> Can you imagine we did a whole year of Tales from the Crypt? <laughs> like I said, you've you've got the comics, you got the show, you got the movies. I mean, like I said, there is literally a lesson. I it's would a morality be... play for God's sake. There's a lesson for every season. I would I would be down for it. <laughs> Probably have. Oh God! I mean, it's only ninety three episodes. We we could do that in our sleep. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we could do that in a year. <laughs> we could do that in our sleep. We could do another podcast about Tales of the Crypt in our sleep, though. No, I just mean instead of Salty and Penny, just do Tales of the Crypt all year. <laughs> no, I mean Salty. Well, if we're not gonna talk politics, might as well not have. Fun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, we have fun here. We have fun. Here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh God, we could always do a Tales from the Crypt episode every episode and then talk something. <laughs> I need a distraction. I do. I was going to say, we'll at least do some. Again, I want to do some Twilight Zone next year, some <gasps> Tales from the Crypt. So. And let me know when you've watched all the Saw movies, still. <laughs> they're, all, they're always going to have another Saw movie eventually, though. That's the thing. I mean, I, I'll, I'm going to go back and rewatch all of them because I forget how far I, I got at least halfway through those things. I mean, I don't blame you for stopping at five. I don't. <laughs> it gets weird. There's like concurrent movies going on, and it gets confusing for a uh, for an average fan. And they just keep popping them out. I'm like, it didn't even die in like two movies ago. <laughs> I think the, the the last one that they just did, where they were, were quote unquote a prequel, was the best one. It's like, yeah, we love Tobin Bell, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like he's the guy. He's the face. You thought you thought we cared about Amanda? No. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. You'll yes. appreciate it. No. All right. But on that note, we could probably wrap it up. Yes. What are we, what are we doing next time? 
Well, seeing as how this was our final episode of November, uh, next time we'll do an episode on our top 10 Christmas TV episodes. Ooh, I got a bunch. I got some good stuff. Yeah, so here, let me go through December here. So, and then the week after that, we'll be back for some Unlimited Justice as we cover the Superman and Lois series finale. Oh, makes me sad every time, but I love it. I know, it seems like it went by so quick. It's only, yeah, they, they got shortchanged. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be back the week after that, and we'll talk top ten Christmas movies. And then, okay. uh, and then after that, we'll be back to uh, Unlimited Justice, and we'll cover uh, JLA 60 and Superman's Christmas Adventure. Oh, we're doing both? Okay, cool. Yes, and then for the last episode of the year that'll uh, drop on uh, December 30th, we will talk uh, the Seinfeld episode, season 8, episode 20, the Millennium. <laughs> the Numanium. <laughs> the Crane. <laughs> you, never have, you never have enough ice. I'm blowing up the balloons right now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Those balloons won't last until then. <laughs> no, these are my everyday balloons. <laughs> You know, some people have everyday flowers. Maybe invest in everyday balloons. Ever since the, like, I had a whole bunch of extra balloons from the Spider-Man episode, I, I, balloons are nice. <laughs> Wing. Yeah, I love popping on the road bus. She's not even drunk, kids. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and no, it was no helium tank involved, unfortunately. No, her voice always sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. So yeah, so uh, there, there's your whole this, there's your December. So send us your thoughts, and again, uh, yeah, send send us your support. Do you want uh, do you want some tales from the crypt? Do you want some uh, Twilight Zone? We're just gonna have a spooky in this bitch. We're gonna we're gonna have a weird 2025 year kids. round. We're gonna have a weird 2025 kids. That's right. <laughs> All right. So yeah, send us your thoughts. Uh, and I, come on, Russell. I know you have thoughts on on this stuff. So send us your thoughts. Email us. Oh, wait a minute. That's not the right one. Yeah, do the other one. It's been so long. It ends in a 69. Hey, old. It's been... <laughs> the best way to end anything. It's been, it's been so... Whoa. I'd say the only way. Really? It's not an opening act? Uh, all right. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> you open the circus with that. You don't end with that. All right, kids. So, yes. Uh, it's been so don't long. Don't tell me what to do, Phil. Oh, my. <laughs> All right, it's been so long since we've done it, honey. All right, so yeah, send us your thoughts. Email us, cave uh, salty and petty six no, salty and petty six through nine at it's gmail. A reflex for them. Don't worry about it. I know. I think I say it in my sleep. Salty and petty sixty nine at gmail dot com or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. And remember, you can find all things Capes, Lunatics, and Salty and Petty episodes, social media, merchandise, get your uh, classic merch, the new merch. Uh, and again, if you don't want to be killed and turned into a Thanksgiving turkey ripped by Little Hellfire, rain ran the or money. Maybe you do. Oh, well, damn. Either way, send money. Yeah, send money. <laughs> please, please. Make it rain. Uh, go make us dance in that pool. Uh, she looks like she was just working a f-ing stripper pole down at Divas. And of course, the Patreon, where again, you can find exclusive content, uncensored content. And if you are a patron, uh, you can request topics for Lilith and I to discuss. So come on, boys, talk, uh, request some untold tales of Lilith Hellfire. Come on. Well, <laughs> so you might just have to make the $100 donation yourself at this point. <laughs> Oh, I will. I'll do it if, if that's what it takes. Oh, do I get to pick? Do I get to pick the the time of your life? You, I want you to talk about. Maybe Vegas, Vegas. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So uh, f- uh, subscribe to the Patreon on Patreon dot com slash Capes and Lunatics, and you can find everything at TubeSpace dot io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. TubeSpace dot io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. More vicious and brutal than ever. And if you thought it was hard to find Little Hellfire on the on the internet before, it's damn well impossible now. She's gone back in time and scrubbed all presents, all her presents from the internet. Either and do you the six too. or do the nine. Mm. Come on, get your head out of your butt, buddy. Mm. Download these podcast episodes and take a nice walk on a warm, steamy day in November, guys. Download every episode of the Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks. Go on YouTube, watch all those videos over and over. Again, again, listen to these. Watch the YouTube on, you know. What else is the family going to do on Thanksgiving? Come on. Oh, 
God, bro. I don't think this is what they want to watch with the family. Really? You ate all that turkey, Grandma? Come on. Uh. We're the secret podcast. No, it's okay. Everybody. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> we come into plain brown wrappers? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's our new artwork. Oh! Censored band paper bag. Just like a brown paper bag, and all you can see is the title, Salty and Patty. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Make it look like it. Look like that's your adult. mama's podcast. Make it look like an adult magazine. Ah, oh. it'll work. Somebody gets the text on the phone, please. Oh, all right, kids. So yes, come back next time. It'll be Christmas. But until then. Treat each other well, especially on Black Friday.